If you've ever tried to show a girl the masterpiece that is Interstellar and she thought it was boring, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all those things. They help me out quite a bit. Guys, if you're not familiar with the comment section, it is probably better than the video, so you can go ahead and skip the video uh, and get down there. So, <laughs> a big supporter of the channel right now is uh, Gun Mag Warehouse. Uh, guys, they give me monetary support. I'm pretty clear on that. And they're awesome. So get in there, buy magazines from them, discount code Grand Thumb. And that also goes for Vertex and Alonzo, who also are pretty cool. So discount code uh, Grand Thumb is actually 25% off Vertex. Kind of out of control. Uh, make awesome plaid, all that kind of stuff. So get in there and get all that stuff, guys. Enough with that. Let's talk about the video today. So today we are going to be talking about the PWS mark 111 rifle specifically the mod 2 uh with m lock uh there are, are there is also the mod 1 they're awesome as well but um that's what we'll be talking about today i also have a lot of experience with the mark 114 which is their 14 5 inch uh variant which is also um pretty on par with this and we'll kind of talk about this rifle so what makes this uh rifle different because you might be looking at this and you're like this is clearly an ar-15 and I don't know what you'd classify it as when you start changing gas systems up, but uh, not quite. So the PWS is a long stroke uh, piston system. So what does that mean? Because uh, very recently I did the video on the HK416, which is a st short stroke uh, gas piston system. So with the long stroke, uh, it's very, very, very similar to the GAT, well, it is pretty much the same system that you see in the AK and also the M1 Grand. Obviously, I'm a fan of the Grand. No, I'm just kidding. The AK is great as well. Um, so what it is, is uh, PWS because it has a great graphic on it, so we're going to use theirs. But essentially, with the DI gun first to start with, um, fire the gun, uh, bolt travels down the barrel. All the gas is trapped behind the bullet that's expanding. Um, it's going to be tapped off with a little gas port come up and the DA gun that's cycled that's siphoned back with that gas tube which then hits the gas carrier key and then it creates that rearward movement of the bolt carrier group to allow the weapon to cycle and all that type of stuff on a long stroke gas piston system um, same thing gas gets tapped off and then it hits a operating rod right so that long operating rod then travels back and that operating rod is attached to the bolt carrier system so they all move as one piece back um, and then cycle forward and that's how the gun uh, runs so there are a couple kind of things that PW PWS has done to make this run uh, better than like your standard kind of uh, piston gun your standard kind of long stroke system so we're going to talk about those I don't want to get too far into it um, I know people are probably going to argue about piston versus gas and go ahead and do that in the com in the comment section uh, whatever you guys like but Let's talk about this gun and kind of what I think about it. Because if you remember, I had a my big problem with the HK416 was kind of the violent recoil impulse. So how does the PWS stack up compared to that? Because the PWS is a gun that you can uh, much more readily get your hands on over the HK416. Uh, PWS is manufactured right in Idaho. Um, cool people. As far as my relationship, before we get too far into this, far, as far as my relationship goes with the company, um, they provided me two rifles that I've dealt with. Um, this is just the upper. I have a rifle from them as well. Um, like many other, uh, kind of, uh, higher end kind of companies that are in the industry right now. Um, I know the people who run the company personally. So just like Geisley and, um, Radian Weapons and Arrow and a couple other BCM, um, I know the people, I've hung out with them, we've gotten dinner together, nothing like where I'm getting like paid to do a review or anything like that. But just understand that there is a relationship there. Now, does that stop me from uh, trashing products, uh, you know, just because I know the people? No. Um, I think I'm very fair with everything and I'm going to continue to be fair and give my honest opinion. But just so you guys know, uh, that is my relationship with the company. So I know the people, they're pretty cool. And uh, yeah, and they provided the, the uh, uppers to me, but no money, no ammunition or anything like that. Uh, this was my own ammo on this gun. This gun has 5,000 rounds through it. 
Um, I've also leveraged my friends' experiences uh, for about a total round count of around 30,000 rounds. Um, certainly, I've done uh, more rounds on certain guns, but I think 5,000 is, is kind of enough to kind of figure out what I need to do with this. So getting into the Mark 111 Mod 2 M-Lock. So first off, um, let's talk about the gas system, right? So we have a long stroke gas system, and then we have the, the very front of it that allows all the gas in. Uh, it's adjustable. Uh, that was kind of my big thing with the HK416. The HK416 was super overgassed, and because of that, you had a really weird uh, kind of stiff in, uh, recoil impulse. So the PWS allows you to go between three different settings. So those three settings are, you have your big circle. So um, as far as adjusting it, um, I just use like an Allen key or anything that's kind of long and thin that can fit in there and rotate it over. So it works fine. But anyhow, uh, big circle is like any ammo. Uh, you can rotate that over. You have the two dots. Two dots is pretty much you're running a suppressor, but you're running low powered ammo like Tula or Wolf or something like that. And then finally you have the three dot system, which is for you're running a suppressor, but you have really high powered ammo. Think like duty ammo, like uh, you know M855A1 or something like that. Um, you know. And anyhow, the point is is that you are tuning the amount of gas going into the system, so you can kind of adjust your recoil impulse, which is really cool. Now I found on my particular rifle shooting duty ammunition, I actually typically have it at the two dots, so which is made for a suppressor with low powered ammo. But I'm shooting um, a lot of unsuppressed on this gun, and that actually works really well with duty powdered ammo. And that's actually a really soft recoil impulse, especially for a piston gun. And even for a DI gun in certain cases, and we'll get more into that in a second, but I just want to point out that the adjustable gas block is probably one of the best parts of the system. It's very easy to get to, um, unless you cover it up, but it's right here. So um, if you're shooting suppressed, uh, this piston is just awesome because on a DI gun, um, even if you're, you know, even if you're adjusting the amount of gas going to the system, uh, you're, you're still going to get that gas coming back into the receiver group to some extent or another because that you're going to get gas blowback. Um, with this, most of that is vented off. Now, of course, you're still going to get gas blowback up from the barrel. Uh, this is always going to happen, especially on a short-barreled rifle. But it's way better than a DI gun. So what that means is that when I'm shooting suppressed, especially fast, um, this thing is an absolute pleasure to shoot. So uh, the adjustable, block, adjustable gas block is really awesome. Now, going back into the gas system itself, um, again, PWS has a great video on this. But a little bit different than certain long stroke gas guns where as the piston is coming back there are three different ports that allows kind of a progressive venting of gases so that the piston naturally slows down and of course and of course along with the buffer spring as well what that means is that it's a really gentle recoil impulse for a piston gun like really surprising the first time you shoot this you can tell it's different if you're used to shooting ars and that type of thing but uh super smooth recoil impulse um just pretty awesome so they they really designed that well um as far you know with this system i know some people are gonna be like well you know the hk416 has a short stroke gas piston system it's a piston hitting another piece of metal and then pinging back so you have two pieces but it's like that system is really well proven you know how proven is a pws and so certainly i wouldn't say as vetted as the HK416, but that doesn't specifically mean less reliable. Uh, in my experience and the experience of my friends and also people who have been through law enforcement groups, uh, I've seen nothing but good things with the PWS as far as its ability to chug through some really uh, dirty environments and that type of thing. Now, like any rifle, I've uh, heard problems with people, uh, you know, people having problems where the rifle wouldn't cycle or function or something like that, but they're isolated and I haven't been able to um, uh, really investigate them were to figure out what it went on, whether it was ammunition related or user error or whether there's something actually wrong with the rifles. But by and far, I've only heard good things about the PWS. So just to let that be said. The one thing about the gas system is that compared to a DI gun, so what makes the AR-15 so great is although you are getting those gases hitting the gas carrier key and you know you do get that gas into the system, a lot of it is vented off. But you know, it gets dirty in there, but what's great is there's so few moving parts and there's so little reciprocating mass. You just have the bolt carrier group just cycling. Uh, you don't have any pistons or anything like that. Because of that, the recoil impulse on the AR-15 is, in my opinion, unmatched. It's super smooth, it's easy to control, and all that type of stuff. 
158.13 split. So when you add a piston up front like you do on the PWS, you add more weight. So no matter what, um, you're going to get a little bit more recoil impulse than a well-built AR-15 like a BCM or a Noveski or Radiant or something like that, or you know, a Knight's Armament or something like that. Now, I do want to point out that if you have uh, you know, not maybe as good of an AR-15, maybe it's a little bit overgassed, you're actually going to find that the PWS actually has a lighter recoil impulse. But again, compared to like those high-end manufacturers, which, and I do consider PWS a high-end manufacturer, that's why I'm comparing it against them, um, you're just not going to get as light of a recoil impulse because it's just, it's physics. You're still going to have that gas piston, which is more weight um, cycling with the actions. Because of that, you're just going to get a little bit more of a recoil impulse. And what that means is that when I'm actually shooting this gun and really getting into it, because that's kind of what this channel is about, what does it feel like when I shoot this gun? Um, I have to try a little bit harder um, than I do with like a well-built DI gun. So that means I'm kind of getting into the gun a little bit more. I'm kind of focusing a little bit more as I'm firing it. But at the same time, I want to say that it's not really that much, which is really impressive for a piston system. So I've been really impressed with PWS. That being said, let's kind of move on here. Um, as far as the barrel is concerned, the barrel is the heart of any gun. They do a great job. Um, barrel's well made. I've gotten you know, one MOA groupings out, uh, out of this particular uh, gun right here, which is an 11.75 inch barrel. Uh, has their PWS uh, flash hider or comp, whatever they want to call it up here. It's the triad or whatever it is. Works fine, all that type of stuff. So the barrel's awesome. Um, as far as barrel life, um, I haven't seen any detriments. My buddies who have a whole lot of rounds on them haven't really seen any uh, degradation of accuracy. I'm sure it'll last about as long as a, as a nicely built barrel was. I'm guessing around 15 to 20,000 rounds, depending on uh, you know, firing schedule and that type of thing. So barrel is awesome. Um, another cool thing about the Mark 111 or just about any uh, PWS rifle is the rail. So the rail is a pick lock rail. Um, you might have heard of the pick mod rail and all that type of stuff. So what does that mean? Um, what it is, is they have M lock going continuous all the way to the end of the rifle. So I'll show you a video of that right here, but they have the Picatinny recessed back which means that you can use either M-Lock or Picatinny here at the ends. So on most of my rifles, I <clears throat> only use Picatinny at the end of my rifle. So I'm actually really happy that they did that. That was a really good uh, design point that they had. You know, and compared to like something like the URGI, that rail, or uh, the BCM MCMR, I love to have mounting surfaces on all sides, but it's not that big of a deal if you're using offset mounts if you have to get the light up or something like that. So I do think it's a great design. They've done a great job with their rail system. It allows a lot of cooling and that type of thing, so the rail's not getting super hot. So good on them for that. Now with this rail, it is plenty strong. I haven't had any trouble with a zero shift when I'm running like a PEC 15 or something like that on the rail. So it's perfectly adequate when it comes to that. Uh, as far as like strength, like, you know, like how much of a beating can it take? I don't know. I haven't thrown this thing into a car yet. But, uh, you know, from dropping it on the ground and, you know, hit, having it hit against uh, door frames and that type of thing, like doing CQD, yeah, it's running fine when it comes to that. And I haven't heard any trouble um, from my friends who are in law enforcement and that type of thing. So the rail is plenty strong for duty use and civilian use and all that type of thing. So the upper receiver group is forged. Super strong, it runs super great. Um, they've done a lot of weight saving cuts and they're actually kind of aesthetic, they actually look pretty good. Um, so that is good on them for that. Now one thing I do really like about the gas system here to kind of go back to the handguard really quick is how uh, thin it is. It's not very uh, girthy or anything like that. Um, sorry sailors, but um, you know, compare that to like the HK416 which is like uber tall, just you know, it's too tall. Uh, so I really do like that they're able to keep it lower and more in line with the system. It just works really well. So again, another point for PWS uh, versus the HK416 when it comes to that. Okay, when it comes to the bolt and the uh, bolt carrier group and all that kind of stuff, uh, well made, well treated and all that type of stuff, um, it's, they're going to last forever. I haven't had any trouble with these or heard of these crack or anything like that. So I uh, doubt that that's going to happen. Uh, it uses a standard uh, AR-15 bolt and then the bolt carrier group itself, of course, is going to be you know, its own little deal because it's connected to the uh, operating rod on the system, which is closed. Um, when it comes to the back of the gun right here, they are using a radiant charging handle. Um, we've talked about it before, but I do consider radiant charging handles uh, the best on the market currently. So, uh, you know, 
it was a good choice from them. They're using the LTs, which are polymer. Uh, they're a little bit more lightweight than the metal radians. Um, they're just as strong and durable. I haven't had any trouble with them. So good on them for using good products when it comes to charging handles. Sometimes you don't have to reinvent the wheel and that type of stuff. If there's a great product, product already on the market, uh, then they're going to use it, and they did. So that works great. So we've talked about a lot of the pros of the uh, PWS Mark 111. Um, let's talk about some of the cons. This is a very light rifle um, that comes down to the barrel profile that they use and to the rail and all that type of stuff. It is still going to be heavier than a DI gun. That's simply because you're going to have more mass. Up. Now, compared to most piston guns, this is very lightweight. Uh, I'm, in fact, very surprised that it's as lightweight as it is, given that you have a huge hunk of metal up there in the front. But it's very well balanced. Um, you will notice it over time a little bit more than a DI gun, but it should be noted that um, it is definitely going to be heavier than your DI gun. And this is going to be a con against it. Um, that kind of comes into play when you're running a piston system. So it's all about give and take, right? Uh, if you're running a suppressor, you're probably going to want that piston system. So again, you're going to have to balance those pros and cons. Okay, forward assist. Oh boy, here we go. So every time I um, see a video on these or, or some gun where the forward assist is gone, people are like, good riddance. Uh, what's the point of a forward assist? <laughs> um, you know, what gun has a forward assist and that type of thing. So um, first off, um, I heard the argument, what gun has a forward assist? Well, on most guns, <laughs> like the AK, the uh, bolt uh, charging handle itself is a forward assist because it actually actuates the bolt. Uh, so most guns uh, don't have a forward assist per se, but they have uh, you can actually actuate and move the bolt with a uh, handle that is connected to it. So I do think that the forward assist is a good idea still. I still like a forward assist. I like the ability to use it. Um, people have always like, people get really uh, angry about the forward assist. They're like, when was the last time you used a forward assist? I'm like, several times actually. Um, I definitely have used it before when doing like press checks, that type of thing, and using that to clo close the uh, bolt into battery and everything like that. So I do think a forward assist is a good idea. They removed the forward assist on, the, uh, on this model, and uh, I wish they hadn't, to be honest. And that's maybe a personal preference, but I think that uh, it's just a thing that, I think it should just be there. Maybe that's me not being able to move on and uh, not break up the Ford Assist, but me and the Ford Assist are not ready to break up yet. So, you know, there's that. So, cons, and this is kind of more personal preference, I suppose, but when it comes to this um, rifle right here, um, if I'm not shooting suppressed, um, it's very smooth, it's a very light recoil cycle, um, still going to be a little bit more than a DI gun. So I actually do still prefer a DI gun when I'm shooting unsuppressed, like a BCM 11.5 or a Radian or you know whatever. Uh, I, I'll take a DI gun over a piston when I'm shooting unsuppressed. Now, if I'm shooting suppressed, hands down, I do think that this is a better system, uh, piston design. And the reason for that is I'm not getting all that gas in my face. I can't explain to you how much it sucks to be shooting a DI gun uh, suppressed, especially when you're doing three to four, uh, you know, shot strings or more, uh, it just becomes unbearable. So if you're just shooting like one or two rounds at a time, D DI guns do fine with suppressed. They can easily handle the gas, but when you start really getting into it or you're firing full auto or something like that, um, that's where a piston system really shines and you're not going to get that just eye stinging gas into your eye to where you can't even ID your target or see where you're shooting and that type of thing. So Shooting suppress, hands down, I'll take this. Shooting unsuppress, I'm still a DI fan. So um, again, kind of ask yourself that question as well if you're looking at the piston system um, for suppressor usage. I think this is a really good design and a really great thing. If you're not running suppressor, um, take a quick look. Make sure that a piston gun is what you really want. I'm not gonna get into piston versus DI in this video, but um, just decide if it's gonna work for you. I know kind of what people wanted was a uh, DI versus kind of piston thing going on here. And I'm not going to talk about DI versus piston other than suppressed shooting and that type of thing for this particular video. So what it comes down to is this is an excellent gun. This is a high-end rifle um, or SBR or pistol, whatever you guys are going to make it into, that is made by a very good company that is reputable. They're going to stand behind you on everything that they do, and their, their customer service is top-notch. So really well-built gun. The question on whether or not it's going to be for you is dependent on what you do. So again, if you're a you know police officer and you got a full auto lower and you're looking to just shred this thing on a suppressor, you know, with a suppressor on, 
yeah, I think the PDOS is a really good option for you. If you're looking to just shred unsuppressed with a short-barreled rifle of some type, yeah, it could definitely be the gun for you because you can adjust the gas settings and kind of get everything dialed in for yourself. It could definitely work, but also take a good look at some of the really well-made DI guns like BCM and Nebeski and Radian and all those good guys out there. Um, take a look. Um, but you're not going to be sad getting this, this upper row, the entire rifle. Uh, if you buy the entire rifle, they have a great lower receiver as well. I don't have it. I just have a Radian lower on this one, which is also excellent. So find what's going to work for you. Find what works in your budget. These aren't too expensive. They're definitely more expensive than like something like a BCM. But again, you get some really cool features along with that. Find out if it works for you guys. You're not going to be sad getting this. I don't have a whole lot more to say I don't know, than, other than to say that uh, you know, do your research. Uh, I can't be kind of your final decision. I'm kind of your gateway drug into researching this rifle. So do your research, do all that stuff, guys. I really do appreciate you watching. Uh, the biggest thing is training, right? This gun's going to be awesome, but if you can't actually, you know, shoot well because you don't have any training or because you don't actually shoot, there's no point to any of this. Uh, so many people want to buy like a super nice gun, but they don't want to do the training uh, or get good at the rifle. So get good with your equipment. If you have a DPMS and you're like super stressed because you're like, this isn't a very good gun because Grand Thumb, I don't care. Go buy ammo and shoot with it. Get good with your gun. But what's going to help you look cool, guys, which we know is what matters, is training. So Cogworks, uh, Bear Solutions, Haley Strategic, Esoteric. Check them out, guys. Get that good training. And as always, look cool. And I've, I've got nothing else for you guys. Last thing I want to hear from you guys is tell me the absolute worst date you've ever been on. If you've never been on a date, I want you to, <laughs> I want you to tell me. I don't make one up for me. Uh, guys, if you've gotten this far, uh, we're going to talk about Big Daddy Unlimited for a little bit. So if you know, I've kind of been talking about them a little bit. I want to spread the word. Uh, it's a subscription service that allows you to... It's kind of like Costco, but for guns. Uh, you can buy... Typical AR products and all that type of stuff at a lower price than what is typically advertised online. So whether or not that's going to be worth it to you is going to be dependent on how often you buy, right? So if you, if you know you're spending the the X Y Z amount of dollars to be subscribed, and you're buying like one product a year, probably not for you. You're probably not going to save money if you're buying at least like a product once a month. Yeah, you're definitely going to be saving enough to where it's going to be more than worth it. So or heck, even a couple, even like you know a couple times a year. So take a look at it. Um, I have a link right below in my description right here. It links right to the website. Um, they also track that. That way they know, you know, look right down there, guys. I got a link direct to, directly to the website. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm a pretty straight shooter on this thing. I bought things from them. Uh, they had RMRs for super cheap for a while. So, again, you can find cool stuff. Just see if it works for you. And uh, for real, I've got literally nothing else for you at this point. So, you should just go and get out of here and do good things. Do good things with your life.